It's time to play the game of who gets the amazing, the good, and the it'll be viable for two months support. Hello and welcome everyone to yet another set breakdown. Today we're going to be looking at, at the second technical booster, which features Great Nature, Mega Colony, and Murakumo. Unlike in the recent G sets, we will not be getting an SP pack in this set, so it's just SGRs and the usual SPs. And there are also five reprints. The first of which is Machining Stag Beetle, followed by Stealth Beast Cat Devil, Castanet Donkey, Coiling Duck Bill, which was a pretty, pretty good one, and Stealth Fiend Lake Diver. So those are our reprints for the set. That way, you know, I'm just kind of getting that out of the way. Now before we take a look at the new cards, each clan did get a keyword. For Murakumo we got Shadow Stitch, which basically triggers off of your attacks not hitting the Vanguard. Great Nature got the Success ability, which basically... Success, for example, 20,000 activates at a power threshold. So for example, when you hit 20,000 with the Rear Guard, then the Success ability of a unit will activate and you'll get some kind of effect usually. And then finally, the Mega Colony one is Dark Device, and this one act is basically active when all of your opponent's units in the same column as the Dark Device unit are at rest. So those are the three new keywords. Now since I don't play any th of these three clans, and yes I did sell Great Nature, uh, the order in which I cover them doesn't exactly matter too much to me, so I'm just gonna go with, I guess, my favorite in terms of support first, which is gonna be Murakumo. First of all, let's take a look at the GR of Murakumo, which is Ambush, Demon, Stealth Dragon, Shibaraku Buster. So, he has both his usual GR and SGR art, and honestly, he looks pretty amazing. Now, his skill is also relatively amazing. He has a 1 per turn GB2 skill, we can count us 1, Soul Bust 2, choose any card in your hand, discard it, and choose a card from your drop zone and return it to your deck. You can choose one of your units, you search your deck for one unit with the same name, so you copy it to a rearguard circle, it doesn't have to be an open one, and then until end of turn, the unit that you called with this effect gets the skill that it basically unlocks its drive check during the first battle of this turn. So, if you are to copy one of your grade 3s, you unlock twin drive, so that Rear guard is going to be twin driving, but if you use the skill on a grade 2 or a grade 1 or a grade 0, you're only going to be drive checking once. So it is much more worth to, you know, use the skill on a grade 3 so you get the twin drive and, you know, you essentially get 5 cards in your hand just through drive checks in that turn. And then, because we're still going with the skill, at the end of the turn, you put the unit uh, that you called with this effect to the bottom of your deck. Very well rounded stride. Honestly, I'm very happy with this one. Like, one of the Art-wise, a really amazing looking GR, like, look at the swords around him and everything, and the skill itself is also pretty innovative, like, I feel like this set kind of pushed, um, innovation pretty hard, at least both Murkumo and, uh, Mega Colony, but I'm very impressed with this stride, so definitely a very good one, I see him as, I guess, like a 2 of in most Murkumo decks, so there's that. Next up is the Triple Rare Stride, Ambush Demon Stealth Rogue Yasuya Tenma. So this is the Yasuya Stride, and it's a very nice one. Its skill is, act once per turn on GB2, you can Persona flip a Tenma, and at the end of turn he gets the Shadow, t Shadow Stitch skill, that at the end of battle your unit attack the Vanguard, so any unit, if the attack doesn't hit you can Kamas 1, if you do you search your deck for the same card that attacked, call it your rearguard circle and shuffle your deck. So you can also call it to occupied rearguard circles, which is pretty important, and this allows you to make huge combos, especially in late game, that will like eat up a lot of your opponent's hand, and it's really really good, and there's a lot of combos that you can do with this card as well. I've seen most people play it as a 2 of, some people play it as a 4 of, but because you still want to max out Home Without uh, most people will just put in him at 2. Next up is a backup grade 3 that Shadow Stitch got in Covert Demonic Dragon Aragoto Spark. He has a GB2 skill on the Vanguard Circle at the end of the battle that this unit attacked the Vanguard. If the attack didn't hit, you choose three of your rearguards, search your deck for one card with the same name as each of those units, you call them to separate rearguard circles, shuffle your deck, and at the end of turn they go back to your hand, only the ones that were called. So pretty well rounded because you put on like non-hit pressure, let's say, and the fact that you can copy basically three cards is also pretty nice, and they go to your hand, so essentially you plus three, although the fact that they're in your hand can sometimes be a bit of a downfall because of how the deck works. Now, his second skill on both Vanguard and Rearguard Circle is when a drive check reveals a card with the same name as a unit on your Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, so any of your units on the field, you can put the revealed card on the bottom of your deck instead of putting it to your hand. If you do, you draw a card, so therefore you don't lose out on cards in your hand. You choose one of your units and get plus 4k. So, if you've got a fairly diverse field, the chances of using the second effect is quite high because obviously if you've got something on your field, chances are that if you drive check it, it's not going to be, you know, 
anything too worthy to keep you in hand because you want to have it at the bottom of your deck. You know, just have it in your deck so you can copy it later. And the fact that you can draw a card means that you, you know, you break even, you don't lose out, you don't minus or anything, and the extra power is definitely a nice bonus. Also, this is drawn by Daisuke Izuka, which is always a big plus. Now, looking at the G-Guard that Murakumo got is Shishi, Shishi Yuzuki, there we go. So her skill is, when you guard with her, only in the battle that your vanguard was attacked by your opponent's vanguard. So, there's only basically one time when you can use this. You can't use it to guard rearguard attacks or when your rearguards are attacked. So, when that happens, you can choose one of your rearguards, move it to guardian circle, and it gets plus 5k shield. Then you search for one card with the same name as the unit that you guarded with, call it to guardian circle, and shuffle your deck. So... Generally okay, except it would be nice if maybe the card that you searched out and guarded with would go back to deck or something like that, or to hand even, but I guess to deck it would be at least acceptable, but kind of, I'm not sure how much I like it because it's very restricted on when you can use it, and also the fact that, not just this restriction, but also the fact that you have to move on your rear guards to guardian circle, circle is also a bit of a downfall, so I'm not, I'm not too keen on this G-Guardian. Next up we have the Dueling Dragon support in Dueling Dragon King Zangiki. So before we go over him, let's look back at one of the older cards which is Dueling Dragon Zanbaku. So Zanbaku's skill is, one is basically a lord skill and the other one is at the beginning of your opponent's right face, if your opponent has a grade 3 or greater vanguard, your opponent has to discard a card from their hand or they cannot ride. So not too important now because you know, it's not um, not too important anymore because this was more better in the Brick Ride format and stuff like that, but just we need to keep this card in mind for the next card we're going to talk about, which is Zangeki. So, Zangeki skill. First one is an auto at the beginning of your opponent's main phase. If you have a Zanbaku in your soul, you can count as one. If you do, you choose one of your opponent's vanguards and give it a skill that when it attacks, you your opponent has to discard a card, otherwise they lose two drive checks. So this is pretty devastating against a lot of restanding vanguard decks like Kagero or Shadow Paladin, Royal Paladin, that kind of stuff, because that skill will stay even if they restand. So they have to discard a card, otherwise, you know, um, they're also gonna have to discard two cards if they have a restanding vanguard, so it's generally very nice because you pressure them quite a lot, because most restanding vanguards have, you know, a cost attached to them, so, you know, there's that kind of thing. And the another important thing to note is that this is at the beginning of your opponent's main phase, so that means after they've stridden, so therefore, you know, there's, this card isn't as good against stuff like Time Leap because you limit the next stage, by you put the skill on the next stage that they have with uh, Zangiki, but you will not be able to put on the Chrono Jet after they've used the next stage. So just kind of little note. Uh, it's generally a very cool card. Like it's pretty innovative. Like they really went really. I feel like they got pretty creative with Murakumo in this set. So I'm pretty happy to see that. Now his second skill is kind of one and retire him. You search for two Zanbakus, put one in the soul and call one to the rearguard circle. You shuffle your deck and then return the one called with this effect to your hand. So you get an attacker and then he goes to hand for basically to become a stride fodder. Really good because obviously you don't want to actually have Zanbaku in your vanguard circle at all and, and at any times actually because it's, it's just not that good anymore and you just want him in the soul. So that's why most Zanbaku, like people that play this deck either play Zanbaku at two maybe 3, but I think 2 is actually a pretty alright number because then you kind of get to use Zangiki most of the time and even if you don't then first you put 1 to the soul and then because it's called the remaining card that means that if there is no remaining card then you don't have to call it so yeah it's just the most important thing is to get in the soul and to, to be able to get Zangiki running. Next up is the special perfect guard that Murakuma got in Shizune. So her skill is when the attack of your unit with the Shadow Stitch ability hits a vanguard, so that kind of goes against Shadow Stitch, you can solve us one to return her to hand. A bit, you know, situational because you have to hit at least one attack per turn in order, in order to be able to return her to hand, so she's not as good as some of the other uh, perfect guards, like the special perfect guards, but I think she is quite alright. Next up, the rare stride that, that Murakuma got is Kiyohime. Her, her skill is, when her attack hits a vanguard, you can soul blast one. If you do, you choose one of your rear guards, search your deck for one card with the same name as that unit, call to your guard circle, shuffle your deck, and at the end of turn, return the unit that you call with this effect to your hand. Pretty alright, because I guess you can do some interesting shenanigans and be able to, you know, prepare for next turn, like for example, copy a like, di like diver and then put it into your hand so you can use its skill next turn, that kind of thing. But yeah, so this could be an alright first try, but I think the G-Zone is pretty limited to be able to include her. Next up, we have the Shadow Stitch Grade 3 in Oniwaka. 
So first off, his second skill is always when you write him Kerobas one solo so on like a top five for a shadow stitch. And then his first skill is on Rearguard Circle on GB1 at the end of the battle that he attacked the Vanguard. If the attack didn't hit, you can Kerobas one. And if you do, you choose two of your other units and they get plus 3k each. Kind of underwhelming. There's actually better uh, backup with threes you can play in the Yasuya deck. So not exactly the biggest fan of this one. Next up, we have two cards that are dueling dragon support and they go together as a pair. The first off is a Slicer Wolf. Now, his skill is when it attacks, if your rank is a dual dragon, he gets plus 2k. And his second skill is when it's on the rearguard circle in the right column in the front row, so it's very specific. If your rank is a dueling dragon and you have a stab fang in your left column, he gets plus 5k, so he's a, he's a 16k attacker on his own. Now, stab fang is a common, and he has a skill that when he's called in the left column of the front row in your rank is a dueling dragon, you can come as one. If you do, you choose any of your other rearguards that are not stab fang and you copy them and then at the end of turn they go they go to the bottom of your deck so you copy it once obviously and then it goes to the bottom of your deck next up we have a really really good grade 2 for shadow stitch in stealth dragon yeshabayashi so his first skill is when you call him you can soul blast one if you do he gets plus 2k and the shadow stitch ability that at the end of battle he attacked the vanguard if the attack didn't hit you can counter charge one and give one of your other units plus 2k very nice, and then his second skill tops him off as well. If your Vang is a grade 4 or greater Yasuya, so basically just Yasuya Tenma in his name, he can attack the Vanguard from the back row, which is quite alright because he's an 11k attacker, so most of the time he's actually going to be hitting, which is pretty nice. So, pretty happy with this card, I think it's actually a pretty good one, so definitely, you know, keep an eye out for him. Next up we have another piece of dueling dragon support in Stealth Beast Trick Arts. His skill is when you call him, you choose one of your units. If you have another unit with the same name as that unit, you can search your deck for one dueling dragon, reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck, and then you choose a card from your hand and put it into your soul. This is a really, really good card for dueling dragon because one, it fixes great stocks. So like if you don't have a great three, you can search it out basically with this card if you have at least one copy of another card on the field. And another really nice point is that it allows you to put a card from your hand to your soul is so that when you're ready on, for example, Zangiki, you can use his skill to search out for the Zanbaku and then put it, you know, into your soul. So very, very cool card, uh, very good for dueling dragons. So definitely, like, you'll definitely see it when you face dueling dragons. Next up, more Yasuya support in Stealth Dragon Onion Bayashi. His skill is also quite interesting. He's got a Shadow Stitch skill on GB1. At the end of the battle, the, your unit, any of your units, attack the Vanguard. If the attack didn't hit, he gets the skill that when your unit's attack does hit a Vanguard and your Vanguard is, a sh and your Vanguard is either a Shadow Stitch ability having holding one or a Vanguard with Yasuya, then you can put him in the soul to draw a card and counter charge one. Now this is good because most of the time with Murakumo you want to have a pretty open field because you're going to be calling a lot of... Like, the fields of Murakumo tend to be like Grey 2s in the back row, attacking from the back row, that kind of thing. So you, you generally... It's actually pretty good that he goes to the soul because it'll fuel some other abilities like Shibaraku Buster who needs a soul blast of 2. And, you know, the fact that you counter charge is really good. Drawing a card is also really nice. So generally, very good grade 1. Next up we have a new starter for Murakumo which I see as an MVP. This is Fugen. So... His first ability is a sh Shadow Stitch ability on GB1. At the end of the battle, the units attack the Vanguard. If he was boosting and the attack didn't hit, you can move him to an open back row and stand him. So he's basically an infinite booster as long as he doesn't hit, which is really, really cool as long as your back row is open. So I've seen people play like two of... A lot of people play two or three of them because like one, you can copy him obviously because this is Murakumo we're talking about. And also like he has a really cool skill. His second skill is also really good because it's not on GB1. You can rest him, choose a normal unit in your drop zone and put it on the bottom of your deck. And if the card that you put on the bottom of your deck has a Shadow Switch ability, you give one of your units plus 3k. This is really good because you want to recycle your copies of cards that like, for example, you need to copy but you kind of retired all of them because you went on a crazy Yasuya Tenma turn, so then if you've got two of these on the field, you rest both and put two back and then you can start comboing again. So, Fugen is really really good. Such a good starter for Murakumo, I'm very happy that they got this. Now, onto the comments. The first one I'm going to show isn't so much a good one as much as her art is really nice. We're going to talk about Ink Died Stealth Rogue Minitsuki. She has, a, she has a Shadow Stitch ability on both Vanguard and Rearguard Circles. At the end of the battle that she attacked the Vanguard and the attack didn't hit, you choose one of your other units and give it plus 5k. Nothing too amazing, but her art's really nice, so I thought I would mention her. Next up, we have a pretty important card in Stealth Dragon Dual Weapon. So, first I'm going to go over skill, and then I'm going to talk about his special interaction with Homura Raider. So, at the end of the battle, that this unit attacked the Vanguard. If the attack didn't hit, you can retire him. If you do, you choose one of your Grade 1 or Grade 3 Rearguards, copy it, and, you know, just copy it. You search for it, and you call it to Rearguard Circle, you shuffle your deck, and again, if turn, put the unit called with this effect on the bottom of your deck. Now, what you can do with Homura Raider... A Homer Raider's skill is, you know, he's a restander, but to restand he has to return three rearguards with the same name. 
Now what you can do with one of the reprints, which is Lake Diver, is when you have four Lake Divers on the field and uh, one dual weapon, you can use Homer Raider to return the three Lake Divers, but keep one on the field. And then with dual weapon skill, you're going to be basically getting rid of him and then copying the one last um, Lake Diver on the field. And then you're going to be able to use Hummer Raider skill again, because it's not a once per turn. The restand skill is not once per turn, as long as you can return three rearguards with the same name, you can restand him. So, it works at, at the end of any battle, so you get six drive checks in that turn, which is, you know, pretty nice for Murakuma. Triple restand is nothing to laugh at. Next up, we've got Stelfin Awakohime. Her skill is a Shadow Stitch on GB1. At the end of the battle, she attacked the Vanguard. If the attack didn't hit, you can choose a rearguard that is boosting this unit and put it on the bottom of your deck. If you do, you choose your, one of your Vanguards and give it the skill that when it attacks, your opponent cannot call Grid Zero cards from hand to Guardian Circle. This is really interesting because most of the time, because she's only an 8k and you're going to be boosting her, like, let's say even with a 7k, she's going to be 15, so she's a pretty low attack, meaning that because it's such a low number, your opponent is more inclined to guard it with just a 5k. But, if they do guard it, they make your vanguard, you know, have a little bit of a restriction going on. So, definitely a bit more of a mind games card, I would say, because then your opponent really has to think, do I take this very small attack and, you know, be able to guard with anything, or do I block it and then have a more restricted attack from the vanguard? So, if it's a, you know, crazy Homer Raider attack, which, you know, you can't actually get a triple Homer Raider with Awakohime on there, but even two Homer Raiders will be... Uh, pretty scary because, you know, the ability to limit the Great Zeros will stay on both attacks, so Awakohime is definitely pretty scary and I would consider playing her, although the only problem is that you wouldn't really want to max her out and in Murakumo you kind of want to max out everything, so might see her in play, might not, but definitely an interesting card. Next up, I believe this is the last piece of Dueling Dragon support in Drawn Shifter. He has an act once per turn skill, you can count us one if you've got a Dueling Dragon Vanguard, you choose one of your units, and if you have another unit the same name as that unit, you choose two of your rearguards, give them plus 2k and the skill, they can attack your opponent's Vanguard from the back row. So, Dueling Dragons just get a bit of back row attacking, that's pretty much all this card does. Next up, uh, again, this, skill, this card skill isn't that great, but the art looks really amazing, this is Mangi Shooter. And his skill is, the end of the day, your unit attacked the Vanguard, if this unit is boosting, if the attack didn't hit, you can put this unit on the bottom of your deck, if you do, you choose one of your units and give it plus 5k until end of turn. So, just thought I would mention this one. Final new card is Stealth Beast Drench Serpent, so this is the new stand trigger. At the end of the battle, your unit attacked the Vanguard, if, the, you, if this unit is boosting, the attack didn't hit, you can put it on the bottom of your deck, if you do, you counter charge one, soul charge one, and give one of your units plus 4k. Very interesting because this is actually a really good stand trigger. Any stand trigger that goes back to deck to later make some advantage is always nice. So you might see this in play, might not, we'll see. All right, let's move on to Great Nature. So I did used to play this clan. It is very fun and the new support does enhance a little bit, but I feel that the Shot Noir deck is still gonna be the superior one. Anyway, let's begin with the new GR, which is Omniscience Dragon Afank. Now, his skill is an act once per turn, not on GB2, so you can use that as a first stride. You can cut off a spot and flip any G unit face up, then you choose any number of your rear guards, and until the end of turn, they get the skill that they cannot be retired by card effects. Now, why this is good is because it counters Kagero when they try to denial Griffin or defeat Flare your field, and as well, you know, it because a lot of the Great Nature skills say First you draw and then you retire the card that you target, targeted, this allows you to draw and then, oh, it doesn't get retired, you know. So there's a little bit of interaction there. And the second part of the skill, for each rearguard chosen with this effect, this unit gets plus 4k. So if you choose your entire field, he's gonna get a whopping plus 20k, which, you know, on the first try it is definitely something, you know, not to laugh at. Next up is the Big Belly Stride. I actually quite like this one. So it's got a skill of once per turn act on GB2. You count us one and persona flip and choose one of your guys and gets plus 4k for each face up card in your G zone. So the more you have face up, the more the rear guard you choose powers up. Then you choose one of your units, so it does not have to be the same one. You can choose your Vanguard, you choose one of your other rear guards, whatever. And it gets the skill that when its attack hits a Vanguard, you choose up to the same number of your other rear guards as number of face up cards in your G zone and stand them. This card is actually really, really good because first off, you get a huge power buff, and you can put that power buff on something that you're gonna restand with Crayon Tiger. So you get not just the power buff, but you can also, you know, put the on hit skill on the card that you're gonna restand with the Crayon Tiger, meaning that, you know, 
If you don't hit the first time, maybe you'll hit the second time. And I'd also like to point out that the skill that it inherits, the on-hit skill that the rearguard inherits, isn't once per turn, so let's say you can actually OTK with this stride, because let's say like you attack first, okay, you don't hit, then you restand it, hit. You stand it, hit. Restand it, hit. And then you just keep basically restanding your entire field for the number of face of cards in your G-Zone, and you know, that can be pretty deadly because it's not once per turn, so... Yeah, pretty interesting. The only once per turn part is the activation part, not the inherited skill. Next up, let's look at the new grade 3 that Great Nature got, which is Arusha. So he's got success of 25k, and his other skill is, well yes, two other skills, both on GB1 on the Vanguard Circle. One of them is, when he becomes successful, you can discard a card from your hand. If you do, you stand him. So, ideally, you would become successful after you've attacked with him. So, you... You kind of, you know, you need to first do your rearguard stuff before using, before reaching... Oh, it's hard to explain this, but basically you need to make sure your rearguard reaches 25k after your vanguard has already attacked, which most of the time it will. Now his other skill is when it attacks, you give one of your guards plus 4k, and the skill that it cannot be chosen by trigger effects. This is kind of a double-edged sword because, you know, you cannot give it criticals, you cannot stand it if you get a stand trigger, which is a bit sad, but... Oh well, you know, it's still a pretty good card, the fact that it's a restander is quite nice. Next up we have the new G-Guardian for Great Nature, which is, which is Ardillo. When you guard with him, you can choose any number of your rearguards and retire them, and if the number of your open rearguard circles are 3 or more, he gets plus 10k shield. Most of the time you will have 3 or more open rearguard circles, even if you don't retire anything, so this is pretty much a free 25k shield. So, pretty good card, I quite like him, and his art is also really nice, so definitely a pretty good G-Guard. Next up, Hamske got support, and the double rare that they got is Hamkichi. So, his skill is, first off, it's a once per turn, Soul Blast 1, choose a card with Hamske in its name from your drop zone and put it in the bottom of your deck. Then, you choose two of your rearguards with Hamske in its name, they get plus 4k until the of turn, and at the end of that turn you retire those units. Alright, so this is a really nice skill because all the Hamske cards, basically, when they're retired at the end phase, they search out something else. That way, you're power buffing and you're also recycling them, which is very, very nice. So, also the fact that you put them from drop zone to deck is also, you know, a way to recycle them. So definitely a very good grade 3. His second skill is Karmas 1 and he gets plus 4k for each two of your rear guards with Hamskin in its name. So, yeah, a little bit of a power buff makes him a pretty nice, uh, just makes Hamske a pretty nice deck now. And it's also quite budget, so if you want to play some budget grade nature, you might want to take a look at Hamske. Next up is the special perfect guard, which is Tri Ruler Cat. Its skill is on GB1 when it's put into drop zone from rearguard circle in your end phase in Canvas 1. If you do, you search your deck for up to one card named Tri Ruler Cat, so the same perfect guard, reveal it to your opponent, put it in your hand and shuffle your deck. So instead of like how the other perfect guards just return to hand, he basically searches out for another one. Now, why it's actually fine that he re re searches for another one is because you're gonna probably recycle him anyway, with like Green Nature recycles a lot of stuff from drop zone nowadays, so basically you're having infinite perfect guards, essentially. Next up, Sylvest got a new form, and finally he's a playable grade 4, so this is lifelong honorary Professor Sylvest. He has success of 25k, and if you have 3 or more rearguards, he has plus 10k, and this, the skill that he inherits, which is when he becomes successful, he can draw an extra card. Just a nice little stride that you can use as a first stride as well, some people play, as a, play him as a one of so. Moving on, we have Stapler Penguin, this is the on right, Canvas 1, Solbus 1, look at top 5 for a success, put it into your hand, then he has success 25k, and when you become successful you can Canvas 1, if you do you give one of your guys plus 1 critical, and at the end of the turn retire that unit. So, a bit of pressure building, but generally not that great. More Hamske support in Hamjiro. Now, this is one of the key cards of the Hamske deck now, and his skill is, at the end of turn, if your vanguards are Hamske, you can choose one of your other rear guards with Hamske in its name and retire them, and retire it. If you do, you counter charge one. Works on both vanguard and rear guard circles, so, and it's also not on GB1, so you can use it in the early game. So it's generally a pretty nice uh, grade 2. The fact that it counter charges one is also a pretty big thing, because, you know, Hamske does counter vast quite a lot. Next up is Grey Belly, a card I'm quite a big fan of. When it's it's got success of 20k, and when it comes becomes successful and attacks the Vanguard, if your Vanguard's a big belly, you can Soul Blast 1. If you do, you give two of your rear guards plus 4k and the skill that at the end of turn you draw a card and retire them. So generally very, very nice stride. I mean <laughs> card. And when you have the big belly stride, you can also use this even if you don't run big belly as a grade 3. So pretty good card. Next belly is Airy Belly. 
If Ivanka is a big belly and has big belly in its name, then he cannot be retired by card effect, so both yours and your opponents. And then when he boosts the reward with his accessibility, you can soul blast one on GB1. If you do the boost, the unit gets plus 4k, and at the end of the turn, retire the unit that it boosted. So, you know, it's not too amazing, but the plus 4k buff is quite nice, and the fact that it cannot be retired is also pretty nice. It's kind of like a stamp C otter. Next up, we have a pretty good starter in Little Belly. So he's got success of 20k, and on GB1 at the end of your turn, if he's successful, you can retire him to counter charge 1. You won't be using it that much, but you know, you can. So it's that emergency counter charge 1. And his other skill is an act, you rest him and choose one of your other Riggers and give it plus 2k. So this can, you know, make your 9k's 11k attack or stuff like that. So the fact that it's not on GB1 either is also quite nice. Next up we have Ink Panda, he's got success of 20k, and when it's on Rearguard Circle once per turn when it becomes successful and attacks of anger, you can draw a card and retire it at the end of turn. Next up we have a really good common that I quite like myself, which is Field Glass Otter. He's got success of 20k, and when you call him on GB1, you can choose one of your other Rearguards, give it plus 4k, and at the end of that turn retire that unit. And then, at the end of turn, if he's successful, you can return him to hand. Therefore, you can reuse the second skill over and over and over every turn as long as you can stay successful. Next up is Anchor Rabbit, a pretty interesting great 2. He's got success of 20k, and it's got the rearguard skill on GB1, when it becomes successful you can count almost 1, if you do you stand it and at the end of turn you can retire it, well you have to retire it. And it's other, GB1 skill on act, you can count almost 1 and it gets boost, so therefore you know a restanding booster can be pretty nice. Next up, more Hamske support in Hami, so this card skill is when it attacks a vanguard, you can choose a normal unit with Hamske in its name from your drops and put it in the bottom of your deck, so a little bit of recycling. If you do, you choose one of your other rearguards with Hamske in its name, this unit and that unit get plus 4k each, and at the end of the turn you retire the unit chosen with this effect. Therefore, you know, it's a little bit of a power buff, she's 8k so it's a bit unfortunate, but you know, you can play as a 3 of, essentially. Next up we have Hamske's rival crayon, Hanzo. No, his skill is, when he's retired during your end phase, you can combat one. If you do, look at four cards from the top of your deck, search your deck for one Hamske in its name, and put into your, show it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So, just a little bit of Hamske searching, and I do like that name. Next up is Chalk Eraser Fennec. He's got a success of 20k, and if he's successful, he gets the skill that when he's put into the drop zone during end phase, you can Soul Blast 1, if you do, you draw a card. Uh, I just thought I'd mention him because... I like the art actually, and the, the little draw card is also quite nice. Sadly, it's a 6k, so it's not as useful. And finally, we have Watering Elephant, this cute little stand trigger. is a success of 20k, and when your other rearguard is put into the drop zone during your end phase, if it's successful, if Watering Elephant is successful, you can put it into the soul. If you do, you call the card that was put into the drop zone to an open rearguard circle. Now, I'm not too sure of this, but I believe you could use this effect to chain duck bills because since if you bring them back in the end phase, then select something else that still has yet to be retired, then technically you could chain another Duckbill onto there and draw extra cards. But I'm not too sure of that one, but I believe that interaction should work. So if it doesn't, don't, don't, don't roast me, please. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the clan that sadly got the short end of the stick, which is Mega Colony. The first card of which is luckily one of the better ones, which is the new stride, Lawless Mutant Deity, Optirandus. So, when I was talking about Bushroad getting creative with this set, I also was referring to this card. It's got an act skill on GB2, you can counterbalance 2 and discard a card from your hand. To give your opponent the restriction that they cannot call units to their rearguard circles until end of their turn. This also includes superior calling, whether it's from hand, deck, Damage zone, drop zone, soul, whatever, no, no calling, whatever, on that turn. So now, not only are you stunning their units and not letting them stand, not letting them do anything with their units, you're also not letting them replace them, which makes this stride super good. And I already saw some pre-order prices, and this guy's looking at 40 euros each, so it's not looking too good for you Mega Colony players, but he's such a good card that I honestly understand it. This guy's a 2-2, two, two, like... Optimally, I play three of him, but I think two is also a good number, so just keep that in mind. And also, on the screen, you'll be seeing his SGR art as well. Next up, we have the other new stride, which is Merciless Mutant Deity Dark Face. So this is the Dark Face stride. He has an act once per turn, Dark Device skill. So Dark Device does specify that your opponent must have no units standing in the same column as this unit. So there's actually room for cannon play, but you have so many other units that will be resting stuff anyway that usually it won't be a big problem. Anyway... 
It doesn't require GB2, so you can use it as your first stride. You can count as one and flip any unit in your G zone face up. Choose up the same number of your opponent's rear guards as the number of face up cards called Mut Merciless Mutant Deity Dark Face in your G zone. So. Uh, as many as you have face up, the more you'll be able to interact with. And then till end of your opponent's next turn, those units that you chose get the skill that they cannot intercept and cannot be chosen by your card effects and costs. Therefore, no seal, for example, can't actually target the, the no seal stride can't target the rear guards to put them in the damage zone. Shadow Paladin can target their rear guards to retire. Messiah can target their own rear guards to lock, so this actually shuts down decks pretty hard. And for each rear guard chosen with this effect, this unit gets plus 5k until end of turn, so going up to a maximum of 15k boost. Generally very good card, this stride is quite bonkers and it gets better with every time you stride it. So counters a lot of stuff, counters quite a lot of decks that you'll see pretty often now, so it also the fact that cannot be chosen by your card effects and costs. Uh, Triggers are also card effect, so just saying, you can't actually choose your that rear guard with your trigger and stuff like that, so generally Dark Face is pretty damn threatening. Next up we have the new G Guardian in Mutant Deity Fortification, Grease Fort. When you guard with it during the battle, your vanguard was attacked by your opponent's vanguard. Again, very restricted on that just that scenario, you can rest one, so there is a cost attached. If you do, you rest all the units in your opponent's back row, and this unit gets plus 5k for every two of your opponent's units that are resting until the end of that battle. So, optimally, if they attack with their vanguard first, they will have four units resting if they have a full back row, meaning he's gonna get a plus 10k shield buff. But if your opponent's smart, they might counterplay against this to the point that you don't actually get that much stuff, you know, don't get much of a power buff and don't get to rest that much stuff, which makes Grease Fort not that great, especially since it only works when your vanguard is attacked by their vanguard. Next up, this special puffer guard, this time is Hexagon Mutant Honeycomb Queen. She has a GB1 Dark Device skill, and her skill is when your units attack hits a vanguard, you can soul that one and return her to hand. I don't really like these on-hit ones, I've never been a fan because I feel like it depends too much, like you're risking a perfect guard on this on-hit possibility, like sure, it's if anything of yours hits, so it's something's bound to hit I guess, but you know, if they're at 5 damage you won't really be using this that much. Next up we have another new stride in Dazzling Mutant Deity Waspy Tail. When its attack hits a vanguard, you can soul blast one and choose any face down G unit and turn it face up. If you do, you choose one of your opponent's units and all your opponent's rear guards on the rear guard circle in the same column and row as the vanguard or rear guard of that unit is on. <laughs> Cannot stand during your opponent's next hand phase. God, that is a tongue twister of a skill. But yeah, basically, it just doesn't let your opponent's uh, unit stand in the same column and row as the unit chosen. So, definitely pretty scary. Giraffa or Giraffa got some support, the first one of which is A rank mutant Sun Giraffa. So the first skill is both on Vanguard and Rear Guard Circle. When its attack hits a Vanguard, if you have a greater, greater Giraffa or Giraffa in its name, you can count as one. If you do, you choose one of your opponent's Rear Guards, rest it, and it's one of opponent's next turn. That Rear Guard gets the skill that when it's put into the drop zone from Rear Guard or Guardian Circle, your opponent must also retire one of their own Rear Guards. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty scary because they can't, if they replace it, they have to lose something else as well. Oh, and just to add to that, they also can't stand that rear guard during the next stand phase, in case that wasn't already obvious. Next up is the usual on ride, kind of must one soul vessel, like a top five for dark device kind of thing. So her name is Ari Antoinette. And her on rear guard GB1 skill is a dark device skill. When she attacks an iron gamma's one and she gets plus 3k for each of your opponents, resting rear guards in the same column as this unit till end of that battle, so she's a 17k attacker on her own. Next up, one of the I guess this is really kind of the best rare for Mega Colony from this set, which is Punish Stag. So it's got a dark device skill when you call it. If your vanguard is a dark face, it gets plus 2k, and you choose one of your opponent's rear guards. During your opponent's turn, if it's resting, then you, the player, slash the opponent of that person, draw a card. It's the same as the dark face stuff. And obviously, that unit cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. So, very good skill. It's really good in the dark face deck, so definitely a 4 of in that deck. Next up, some machining support in Machining Dive Beetle. So this interacts a little bit with Stag Beetle, but let's just read it first. So it's got an act on Vanguard and Rearguard Circles. 
You can count as one to stand all your machine dive beetles on rearguard circles and stand them and they get plus 2k each. And then its other skill, which is the 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 bad part of the skill, I guess, is that it cannot stand during your stand phase if it's on a rearguard circle. Now this interacts with stack beetles, so I guess it's kind of okay, but generally I'm not too impressed, except the art. The art does look pretty amazing. Next up we have Vulcan Laferte. So it's got a skill on GB1 Dark Device at the beginning of your main phase. You can pay the cost, which is putting him into the soul. If you do, you cannot charge one. Now, the second skill is if your Vang is a Dark Phase, this unit cannot be chosen by the effects of your opponent's cards. So, rip, you know, anything that has control. And your opponent's units in the same column as this unit cannot intercept. So, not just a bit of field control on the opponent's side, or rather, kind of... Yeah, it is field control since they can't really, they can't intercept. But also he cannot be retired, which can make him pretty annoying if you put two of them on the left and the right sides of the field. Next up, we have a new starter in Childhood Command, Rosenberg. So he has a GB1 Dark Device skill. You can put him in the soul and choose one of your opponent's rear guards and until the end of your opponent's next turn, it gets the skill that it cannot intercept and cannot be chosen by effects and cost of your cards. So same stuff as a dark dark face uh, stride. Essentially, you're not gonna be putting triggers or retiring it or doing whatever with that unit that it chooses. His other skill is an act, you rest him and choose one of your opponent's units and rest it. So pretty good because you can rest him, you can use the second skill first and then still use the first skill after that to just put him in the soul. So definitely a nice little starter. Next up more Giraffa skill in A rank mutant Gragirafa. So his first skill isn't that great, if you have Vanguard with Giraffe in his card name, you can combust one and choose up to one of your opponent's rear guards, rest it, and this unit gets plus 2k. So it's an alright little control skill, but his second skill is really nice. If you have the grade 0 Giraffe on your Vanguard circle, you can discard him from hand, the this grade 2. And if you do, you search your deck for the grade 1 Giraffe from your deck, ride it as stand, and shuffle your deck. And when you ride that as stand, you search for the grade 2 Giraffe. So basically this is a ride chain fixer and also a great stuck fixer, which is very, very cool. Next up, a uh, nice art card that I've seen people run in, in uh, Arista Scythe. Scythe, I guess we're supposed to pronounce it as now. Uh, she's got a dark device on both Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, and when she attacks, she gets plus 2k until in the battle. She's just a consistent 11k attacker from very early on. A card I feel I should mention is Scarlet Venom. When you call him and you have Dark Device active, this unit gets plus 2k for each of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as this unit. So he's gonna get a plus 4k essentially. So, eh, it's okay. Some, I've, I've seen people on my Discord talk about him, so I was like, I guess I might as well mention him. Next up, we have Machining Cricket. You can rest him if your Vanguard's a Machining. You choose, choose up to one of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as this unit, and that unit cannot stand your opponent's next stand phase. And also, Machining Cricket can stand during your next stand phase. So, I guess it's just machining stuff. So, there you have it. An interesting card that I'm not sure if you'll get any play is Mega Colony Battler E. When your Vanguard attacks, if all rearguards of all fighters, all units, not just rearguards, are in rest, you can put retire him. If you do, you give your Vanguard plus 10k. So, this is kind of like a last chance struggle, I guess. Uh, yeah. Like, it's just a little interesting card. I feel like I should mention it because it's it's an interesting interaction as well. So, Bushrod being creative, I guess. Mega Colony got the usual draw trigger that you can put into Salt to give another unit plus 3k. And I happened to forget to mention the triple rare, oops, in Sky Slicing Rending General Superior Mantis. Uh, so, before people can blame me that I forgot this one. He has two skills, one of which is Dark Device. When you ride him or call him, you can out of one. If you do, you choose one of your opponent's figures in the same column, and that unit cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. His other skill on GB1 is when he's called, you can choose one of your opponent's rearguards, and the unit, unit cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. So when you call him, you essentially stun two of their rearguards. So, not that good because if the on-call, if it was an act, like if the second skill was an act, it would be at least alright. Now, like I've seen Japanese people play this, but I'm generally not too big of a fan of the skills, but the art is quite nice. Final card is a new stand trigger, which is Makeup Widow. She has a GB1 Dark Device and Rearguard Circle at the end of each turn. You can put into the soul if you can charge one and stun one of your opponent's grade one or less rearguards. So the fact that you have to put her into the soul instead of back to deck is a bit unfortunate, but the stun is pretty nice. So that's pretty much it for this set breakdown. I guess it did kind of get long, especially since I talked about Murakumo for a long time, but I do like it the most out of the three supported clans. I feel like a colony is kind of okay. The Dark, the dark Face deck is much better now. Uh, machining didn't really get much, but they were already quite solid to begin with. And in terms of Great Nature, I feel like Chat Noir is still gonna stay the best deck because it just has a lot of potential as always. 
uh, but it's got a lot more new tools to work with now, especially the stride, so I'm very happy to see that. And obviously I'm very happy to see Murakumo become viable, like I never thought I would see this, I would live to see this day, so it's definitely a nice little addition. So that pretty much wraps it up for this set breakdown, and I'll see you guys next time.